Mr. B here. Lewis structures consist of the symbol of an element as well as one dot for each valence electron found in an atom of that element. Lewis structures also provide a convenient way to keep track of electrons during the chemical reaction. In this video, I will explain how to use Lewis structures to illustrate a number of molecular compounds. Molecules possessing covalent bonds, the following process may be used. Consider the compound methane or CH4. Methane contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. Since carbon will produce four bonds, carbon is written first as a central atom, surrounded by the four hydrogen atoms. Now, using our periodic table, we must determine how many valence electrons each atom will possess. From the periodic table, carbon possesses four valence electrons, and each hydrogen will possess one valence electron for a total of four. This means that eight electrons are available to participate in bonding. Remember, during a chemical reaction, it is the valence electrons that actually participate in the reaction process. Carbon is a nonmetal, so is hydrogen. Therefore, the bond formed between these elements are known as covalent bonds and illustrated by drawing a line. Each element is connected to the central element via a line that represents a covalent bond, where one covalent bond consumes two electrons. So since one, two, three, four covalent bonds were used, eight total electrons were consumed. For the element hydrogen, two electrons will satisfy or create a stable atom. For the element carbon, an octet of electrons is required to stabilize the atom. Since one line represents two electrons, the hydrogen is satisfied. Since one line represents two electrons and there are one, two, three, four lines for a total of eight, the carbon is satisfied. So the Lewis structure for the compound methane is written as C with four H's. When writing Lewis structures for diatomic molecules, the same process may be utilized. In this case, we have the fluorine diatomic molecule. To write the Lewis structure for this molecule, simply write two Fs, where each F possesses seven valence electrons for a total of 14. Connecting the Fs via a covalent bond will consume two electrons, which leaves 12. The 12 remaining electrons may be now utilized to satisfy each of the fluorine atoms, where at this point, each atom possesses an octet, two, four, six, eight electrons, or eight valence electrons. The Lewis structure for the compound silicon tetrachloride is written as follows, where Si, which forms four bonds, is written as a central atom, surrounded by the four chloride atoms, which each will form one bond. Si is located in group four. Cl is located in group seven. However, there are seven Cl's. So, 4 times 7 is 28, which 
which yields a total of 32 electrons. Connecting the central atom to the chlorines will consume eight electrons, which leaves 24. The 24 remaining electrons are now used to satisfy the perimeter atoms, which is the chlorine. This represents the proper Lewis structure for a compound known as silicon tetrachloride. Also useful in illustrating both the molecular and bond polarity in a molecule. Consider the example of silicon tetrachloride, where the electronegativity of chlorine is 3.2 and the electronegativity of silicon is 1.9, where electronegativity represents the affinity that an atom has for the electrons in a covalent bond. Since the electronegativity of chlorine is greater than the electronegativity of silicon, the two electrons forming this covalent bond will be closer to the chlorine atom. This will create a polar bond known as a polar covalent bond or PCB. Notice also that surrounding the silicon atom are four chlorine atoms. Since the four chlorine atoms create a symmetrical structure, the molecule represents a non-polar molecule. If the Lewis structure of a molecule is symmetrical, where all sides are occupied by the same atom or the same element, the compound is considered to be non-polar. Other examples of Lewis structures for molecular compounds include water, hydrogen fluoride, and ammonia. In the case of water, the oxygen will contribute six electrons, and the, each hydrogen will contribute one for a total of eight. Connecting the two hydrogens to the central atom consumes four, which leaves four electrons remaining. These four electrons are now used to satisfy the oxygen. In the case of hydrogen fluoride, fluorine contributes seven and hydrogen contributes one for a total of eight. Connecting the fluorine to the hydrogen consumes two, which leaves six electrons remaining, which will be used to satisfy the fluorine. In the case of ammonia, the nitrogen contributes five and each hydrogen contributes one for a total of eight. Connecting each hydrogen to the central atom consumes two. Since there are three hydrogens connected to the central atom, the total electrons consumed will be six, which leaves two remaining, which are used to satisfy the central atom. structures may also provide some insight into the shapes of molecules. For example, in the case of water, the shape of the molecule is identified by the following arrangement. AB2E2 or AB2E2. This arrangement will always yield a shape called the bent shape. So the shape of a water molecule will be written as follows. In the case of an AB or two elements combining via a covalent bond, 
this will always yield a linear shape and the molecule is already written properly. In the case of ammonia, where A is bound to three other atoms with one pair, with one lone pair of electrons, the shape will be trigonal pyramidal. And when writing the proper Lewis structure for ammonia, the H's are written slightly beneath the equatorial plane. And the two unshared electrons are written above the structure. Sometimes a molecule will contain double bonds. In the case of oxygen, where each oxygen contributes six electrons for a total of 12, the Lewis structure is written as follows, where two O's are connected via a covalent bond, which consumes two electrons, leaving a total of 10, which are now used to satisfy the atoms one at a time. After providing the atom on the right with six dots, four dots remain. This clearly does not create an octet for each atom. Therefore, to complete the octet, a double bond may be drawn between the two oxygen atoms to complete an octet for both. Now consider the Lewis structure for a compound known as carbon dioxide. In this particular case, the C is written in the center, surrounded by or flanked by two oxygens. Carbon contributes four valence electrons, and each oxygen contributes six for a total of 12 plus four, or 16 electrons. Connecting the central atom via one covalent bond consumes four electrons, which will leave a total of 12. The 12 remaining electrons are now used to satisfy the perimeter oxygens. Clearly, the carbon is not yet satisfied. To satisfy carbon, simply create a double bond between the C and each of the O's, where each bond consumes two electrons. In the case of a compound sulfur trioxide, S is written in the center surrounded by three O's. Since both S and O are located in group six, the total number of valence electrons will be 24. Connecting each atom to this, each perimeter atom to the central atom via a covalent bond will consume two electrons per bond for a total of six. This will, relieve, this will leave 18 electrons remaining, which are used to satisfy the perimeter oxygens, which will now consume the entire 18, leaving zero. Clearly, the sulfur is not yet satisfied. So to satisfy the sulfur, simply create a double bond between one of the oxygens and the central sulfur atom.